Well, good afternoon, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. I'm William Murdoch, the Executive Director of the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. Our friends just call us MORPSI. And we're really uh, looking forward to a special <laughs> member update today on the Bipartisan Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Uh, this is an exciting, impactful time for not just the nation, but thinking really about our region, about our local governments, about the projects that we've been waiting to get uh, moving forward. And this historic package could touch just about every facet of the things that Morpsey works on with you in our region. Roads and bridges, passenger rail, highway safety, broadband access, uh, all of these things are gonna give us a level of support that we may not see again anytime soon. So that's what we want to talk about today. And we know that our infrastructure in Ohio has suffered for a long time from the systemic lack of investment. And uh, it's a painful thing to talk about, but the American Society of Civil Engineers gave Ohio a C minus grade on infrastructure. We think we can use this bill very proactively to correct this and improve this, and especially here in Central Ohio where it's growing, where we're growing. So we want to make sure our members take advantage of this these transformative funds. And what uh, we'll be talking about a little bit later, you'll hear from Joe, Morpsy is going to be proactively involved here. We're putting together a team to focus on this package, dissect it, get deadlines, help folks write applications, and really make sure we're not leaving a dollar on the table. Um, so we're really excited to be able to offer that, and we'll share that a little bit later in the presentation. Today, we're gonna do four things. First, we're gonna hear from Marsha Hale, who's a policy consultant with Hale Strategies to walk us through these funding uh, provisions that are set aside for Ohio. And we're gonna hear about some key pieces of legislation still pending and what that could mean for the region. After that, we're gonna hear from Avery Pearson, the legislative assistant to US Senator Rob Portman. And it's no secret that Senator Portman was the lead Senate negotiator on the Republican side of the aisle. His office worked tirelessly to make sure this bill became law, and Avery was the one directly involved with those negotiations. We're really excited to hear her perspective on the bill and the opportunities. Then we're going to hear from Joe Garrity, Morpsey's Director of Government Affairs and Community Relations, and he's going to lead us through how we will be a resource for you on the funding rollout. And then last, we'll have a couple of quick announcements at the end. So without further ado, let's get started, and I'd like to turn this over to Marsha Hale to take us through the legislative update. And Marsha, the floor is yours. Thanks so much for being a part of today. Marsha, uh, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Right. Fabulous. Thank you, William. It's great to see you. It's great to be involved in uh, this type of briefing again. And it is fabulous to be talking about the passage of this infrastructure bill that will bring so many resources to your region and to the state. And as you stated, um, President Biden signed the 1.2 trillion infrastructure bill into law on Monday, and now the really hard work starts. But it, um, as you all know, it had bipartisan support and Senator Portman spoke eloquently at the bill signing at the White House. Um, and as someone who for 10 years ran a nonprofit, nonpartisan, bipartisan infrastructure coalition, this was really welcome news. And to get some sense of how good this program was and how highly supported it was, just take a look at the people and the organizations that supported it, from the Chamber to the AFL, to the Business Roundtable, to the Sierra Club, mayors and governors and their organizations. It's it's really quite impressive and, and, and uh, uh, a lot of work went into it. So if we can go to the next slide and take a look, I think I'm a, I'm a big believer in showing people things visually. As you can see, here's what's in the bill. And the large blue section is the reauthorization of the highway uh, transportation bill, um, the surface trans transportation bill. 
Now, in the past years, it's taken many, many extensions to get this done. So even on its own, this is a, a major accomplishment. But as you can see, there's $505 billion in additional spending in, in the bill and all those categories. So let's, and we'll make these slides available to anybody who wants them. Let's flip to the next slide. So this is just the total new spending. Uh, so you put this on top of the surface transportation bill and it is, it is really quite transformational. Now, all of that um, will be, uh, much of it will be new programs. And just as an example, look at what the broadband is, the high-speed internet, which is $65 billion and Amtrak will get $66 billion. That's a lot. And in this, in the transport transportation section alone, the secretary will have uh, the ability to approve $100 billion in discretionary programs outside of the formula. So if we flip to the next slide, as you can see, Ohio does very well in this bill. The dark, the darkest circles, the colors on here are 12 billion or more. Uh, and you can see how uh, that Ohio has done well in this. The whole country does well, but Ohio does especially well. Um, so let's flip to the next slide. Now, so what's next? Um, uh, um, actually flip to the very next slide. Okay, what's next? So today the House is considering the uh, President Biden's Build Back Better fund, uh, and it is this, as many of you've heard, the moderates in the House didn't want to vote on it until CBO had put out its uh, estimates. It will be out this afternoon. There is some sense it will be voted on tonight or perhaps tomorrow. Uh, Speaker Pelosi said no one's going home until this gets voted on. So so we shall see. As you know, it took a long time to get the infrastructure bill done. Um, but whatever passes the House is going to go to the Senate and the Senate's going to amend it and they will pass it back to the House. And uh, we hope to have, if it, if it is successful, it will be late December before it gets done. But that's a right now 1.85 trillion people expect that that will go down um considerably but not entirely they also have to pass a continuing resolution to avoid the senate from i mean the uh, the government from shutting down uh right now that date is december 3rd there are discussions ongoing right now uh, to to push that to either December 17th or sometime in February and March. It's actually really not a good idea to push to February or March, but um, we shall see what we shall see what what happens with that. The debt ceiling has to be raised by December 15th. Um, as of this morning, there are negotiations going on to try to get that done by the 15th with only Democratic votes, but in cooperation with Republican Senate leadership. And then lastly, the national defense bill needs to be approved. Uh, it is always, uh, since 1961, it's been approved every year. Um, and it's always bipartisan. Um, it is much later this year than normal, but the Senate is now has it under consideration. And until last night, the uh, bill that is uh, focused on our China and our competition with China was going to be attached, but it has now been decided that they will take the Senate bill and they will take the two House bills and try to go to a conference committee. So I tell you all this because this is a lot that has to get done in December. And on top of that is the implementation of the um, infrastructure bill, which is quite considerable. 
Um, and if you just flip back to the one slide we missed that, I, I'll just leave this up here. But these, this should be really interesting to Ohio, to regional governments, to Morph City and whatever. But inside these bills are some regional uh, centers and they have funding for them. And the ones that I find really interesting are the USICA. They're all great, transportation, whatever. But there's a considerable money in there to stand up new innovation hubs. Uh, and they are intended to be spread out across the across the country. So we'll be working with William and others to figure out how we get you every speck of information we can to try to figure out what what makes sense for your uh, uh, for the region. So if we'll go to the last slide. Um, this is uh, a portion of the White House funding sheet for Ohio, and this is just the original estimates and whatever. I won't go through it all because I think Avery will talk about that, and quite frankly, she's much more qualified than I am to do it. Um, I just want to say what that this, this really has been phenomenal, and I have such respect for people, uh, for people like Avery and her colleagues on the Hill who just slugged away and to get this done and it will truly be transformational and we need to find out everything in it that's possible and uh, and bring as much as you can to to your region and to ohio so with that i'll turn it back to william great thank you so much marcia really appreciate you walking through uh, the update. I'm going to pause here and see if anybody has questions for Marsha. Uh, we have the opportunity to use the chat function and uh, we'll wait just a moment to see if uh, folks do have questions. Uh, and I have one that's come in here a uh, different way. So um, Marsha, could you talk a little bit about um, how Central Ohio might position itself to be competitive in, in bringing these back. You mentioned $100 billion of discretionary grants. It sounds like we're going to have to be really thoughtful and assertive in going after that. Uh, yes. Now, what, one thing is, and, and, and I've talked to any number of organizations here in Washington. In fact, I had a, a call yesterday with the chamber and the business roundtable and um, any number of uh, bipartisan type organizations who are all really hungry for information. But I think the most important thing to do is to get as much information as this flows to the departments as possible. They will all start doing briefings and putting out uh, background papers. And it's a big bill. And if Build Back Better also passes, there's just enormous opportunity. So a lot of the rewards or funding will go to those people who a first really dig deep and understand it and ask questions and then prioritize what they're what they're going to do. A lot of this is fed, is formula funding that's in the uh, uh, transportation bill, but there's a lot of discretionary money in here. And I think what you have to do is really focus and strategize about what's best for your region and what you're most likely to get once you know what the details are. Right, so we've got another question uh, here um, that I wanted to know, is there anything dedicated uh, around, uh, we do a lot of active transportation work at Morpsey, so anything dedicated to bicycles, pedestrian infrastructure, uh, those kind of different kinds of transportation connections? Uh, yes, there's quite a lot in here and I'd be happy to share it. I don't have any of the different um, uh, functions off the tip of my tongue, but Avery may know some of those. It's, it's just, it, as you flip through the bill, it's it's really quite impressive. Great, and we've got uh, one more question here uh, that says, is this the kind of scenario uh, when you're looking at such a massive bill that uh, we're going to need to have projects that are ready to go um, in order to get priority, or do you think there'll be time to plan uh, for some of the asks? 
Oh, I think there'll be time to plan for some of it, but I think, as I said, find, getting the information and being able to, you know, take it all in and then decide where you want to go. There will be time. Th this bill, is, you know, these bills are spread out over se several years, and the departments have to issue their regs and their their requirements. So you're going to have a little bit of time, a little study between now and January before things start coming out. OK, so the last question, then we'll move on to Avery. Uh, Marcia, you know as well, we work with a lot of local governments. Uh, some of them are big, some of them are small. They're all feeling a little overwhelmed uh, by this. Uh, so the question is, what are, are there things that if you're a local government leader, you should uh, do right now that you should focus on? Any any words of advice there? Well, I think partnerships in this. I mean, the, you take, everyone should assign somebody but working together as a group or as a region and sharing resources and information is probably the best thing that you can do everyone and i've talked to any number of other organizations around here everyone is feeling a little stressed right now because they all want information and it's not quite it, it it's not to the detail where you could start making specific plans but get up to speed on what's in it and then and then move on that. But I would suggest working together in partnerships would be the best thing to do. Oh, great. Well, thank you for the, the good advice and the update, Marcia. I know our folks really appreciate uh, that perspective. And if you could hang on the line, we're going to move on to our next uh, speaker to add a little more perspective. And uh, next we've got uh, Westerville's own Avery Pearson, who serves as Senator Portman's lead transportation staffer. And Avery, uh, we thank you for all of your work and your leadership on this. Earlier when we said that uh, Senator Portman's staff was working tirelessly on this, we meant you. And so we hope that you've been able to uh, get a little bit caught up on rest uh, since uh, the bill signing, uh, if anything. So um, we're really looking to uh, forward to your uh, uh, perspective on the bill, so I'll I'll turn it over to you. Yes, absolutely, and and thank you, and and thank you, Marcia, for your kind words. Um, you know, this is the type of thing that you you know you come to Congress to try and do. So, um, certainly, I think perhaps maybe the most timely thing to start with would be uh, my answers to those two questions um, that I know Marcia touched on a bit, but certainly with regard to what you would classify as a transportation alternative, something in the pedestrian space or multimodal in the lane of bicycles or other sorts of transportation alternatives. There's a lot of different pots of funding within the base surface reauthorization text that exist or were expanded. The most notable is a 10% set aside within the surface transportation block grant program, which is a long existing program within federal highway aid that goes to the state level and then trickles down. Um, so nationally, the service transportation block grant program receives 72 billion and a 10% cut of that would be 7.2 billion. In Ohio, the total slice in federal aid is 9.2 billion, certainly as the White House has confirmed, that's confirmed with federal highways and that $9.2 billion cut that Ohio will see over the next five years, um, you could conceivably say that uh, I believe it's $2.4 billion is the surface transportation block grant program cut. So then if you took 10% of that, and this is back of envelope, if you took 10% of that, you could maybe say that 244 million is, is available for these sorts of projects. And that's in one program. So there will be other slices. Certainly something like RAISE, which was formerly called BUILD, uh, is a discretionary program. And it is truly a program that the secretary likes to have a big, a big role in. And even the most recent, the 2021 RAISE grant awards that you know we just got notice of earlier this week, um, the breakdown was was quite a bit different than what it was under Trump. Under Trump, the build grant programs were really heavy on highway, really heavy on freight. That was most of the allocation. Um, and we don't know for sure yet. I, don't, I haven't really seen a full, full analysis, but preliminary analysis have shown that the 2021 uh, raise grants 
tended to be distributed in a bit more of a 60-40, I think, split between um, highways and transit. And then certainly among those distributions, you also have different sorts of multimodal projects um, down to the pedestrian walkway, um, bicycle lane sort of avenue. Um, but there's more, but those are kind of the biggest, the biggest buckets to point to when it comes to those sorts of transportation pieces. In terms of how much time localities have to really make determinations, this is a really long process. Um, this is going to be something that year to year, there are going to be cuts. There is, you know, cuts of dollars out to states, um, different sorts of notices of funding announcement from the agencies every single year of that, um, you know, between the 550 and new spending and between the overall aggregate number of 1.2 trillion, those allocations are going out year to year. There's no lump sums. So not only do you have that, but a lot of these newer programs that we created through the negotiations, those programs have to be uh, created. And so, you know, there's going to be quite a bit of lead time and certainly an upfront, um, you know, pause in before we see these dollars because the, the agencies have to create the programs and, and issue, you know, guidance and, and evaluate awards and everything like that and everything that you all are um, used to with regard to any of the grant programs that you've interacted with in the past, either on the state level, through the federal level, through the, you know, highway aid that Ohio gets, like the track program, or something like infra or uh, build now raise, um, you know, it'll just, it'll vary per, pro per program. And that's not a delightful answer for anyone. And I certainly understand that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're coming through it as well. And, you know, that's something that we're trying to do and trying to go back and read all the text. Um, for that very reason, so that you know we can try to give as much color as we can to make sure that Ohio is really, really well positioned to do well, um, particularly because we have such such a high level of ownership with this product. Um, I know this was covered in the slides, and I'll go through it again just so we have it. The 9.2 billion for Ohio's roads and highways—that is the formula fund cut. Uh, beyond that, there are $33 billion worth of competitive um, funding, competitive grant dollars that, um, you know, anyone can have access to with regards to something like the Columbus Crossroads, um, certainly something, something in that space, a, a, a project of certain regional significance that, you know, you may be opting for. But, you know, I would also say that beyond those sorts of traditional programs, this administration is going to want to share the wealth, if you will, with different sorts of modes of transportation and different sorts of types of projects. So um, RAISE is ripe for that. It's a super broad definitional program uh, that's funded at $7.5 billion over the next five. Um, and typically that program is funded at one. So you could conceivably say that a difference between $1 billion a year and $1.5 billion a year means there's, you know, <laughs> 50% more to go around than, than you would typically see. So um, that's that's a huge win and, and hugely helpful in conjunction with the formula dollars that folks will see. In addition to that, the formula program we created to the tune of 27.5 billion nationally for bridges, Ohio will see 483 million over the next five, and that will be able to go towards bridges of all different shapes and sizes across Ohio. Um, and, and I would say, really importantly, on the local level, 15% of that $483 million needs to go to off-system bridges, so county, local-owned bridges that tend to be um, differently positioned in terms of their state of repair, their condition, um, so that's, that's super helpful. Uh, I have a roundup, I think, to $1.3 billion for public transportation. I know there was a $1.2 on the on the slide, but I'm sure it's in the middle there. That's going to be mostly through the formula uh, world. And in addition, we've got you know some plus ups here and there with regard to um, state of good repair grants, with regard to the low or no emission um, grant program, which I know CODA um, certainly has an interest in. And then as well, um, not necessarily something in the Morpsey wheelhouse, but certainly something that will be around Ohio, the Appalachian Development Highway System which stretches through, I'm forgetting the counties, but it's a little T right below <laughs> central Ohio. Um, that, those two roads, those two um, state routes, I think, I think they're state routes, they might be 
uh, slices of interstate, but 95 million will be coming to Ohio for that. And quite frankly, when I put on a Morpsey hat for that, the fact that we have dedicated funding for the Appalachian Development Highway System improvements to me means that certain demands that ODOT may have with regard to those sorts of allocations of their federal aid that they get, you know, maybe you see different sorts of priorities from ODOT because they've got all these different buckets to address other needs that may have all been reliant on one bucket in the past. Um, so I, th I think that's also really important and helpful. Um, something that's definitely exciting, I know important to the administration and certainly with our equities in Ohio with, with being a heavy automotive state, definitely important is the $140 million for formula grants for electric vehicle charging. These need to be along corridors. There's alternative fuel corridors. I want to say there's five in Ohio, but they do stretch across 70, 71 different sorts of spots along the interstate that you, you would think of. Um, and, and those are going to be the spots where these dollars are targeted. It'll be um, in ODOT's um, interest and it'll be their role to determine where these dollars go and where these charging stations um, should best be deployed. But, you know, I, I would not be surprised if they're going to be really, really reliant on a, you know, a conversation between um, localities and, and those localities that are around the alternative fuel corridors. And I know that's there's a website uh, through DOT, I want to say it's the Federal Highways, that has the alternative fuel corridors, if you don't already know them. Um, certainly in the broadband space, you know, we don't know <laughs> how much Ohio is getting for terms of deployment because it is entirely reliant beyond the initial allocation of 100 million. It is entirely reliant on FCC form 477 maps that uh, aren't uh, created yet. You know, FCC has been working on them. It's been a it's been a goal. The goal is early 2022. Um, but you know, we've seen we've seen those sorts of updates get delayed in the past. So. You know, I would be I'd be hesitant to be more certain than early 2022, and even that could potentially change. But certainly, um, within the bill, we put three different provisions within the deployment section of the broadband uh, division that were specific asks of FCC regulatory asks for different sorts of dials that we could turn up as Congress to help them execute the FCC mapping quicker. So because our deployment dollars are reliant on what the FCC defines in their new maps as unserved and underserved and served, um, you know, beyond the initial allocation that states will get in, in due time in a couple months and a few months, um, the, the rest of those deployment dollars and the, the projects we see through those dollars, um, you know, that, that'll take a while because we're, we're waiting on, on data that isn't quite out the door yet. Um, so, you know, those are kind of the, the, the big buckets. Certainly our airports are gonna see some dollars quickly. The terminal program will be ready to launch. I was just looking today, the terminal program is gonna be ready to launch in about two months. Um, so, so long as everything goes well there, the airport terminal improvement program is gonna be one of the programs that'll be, um, you know, ripe for looking at FAA's notice of funding announcements. Um, you know, those are going to be things that folks are going to want to be glued to uh, in due time. So um, I, I feel like questions are probably going to be a better way to channel any more information. But, you know, I've kind of thrown thrown everything at the wall. Thank you so much, Avery. And I, I think everybody uh, sees just how involved you were because the level of detail on this bill, you just scratched the surface, but we appreciate uh, you being so thoughtful about those details. You started talking, uh, so folks, if you have questions, go ahead and uh, put them in the chat. Um, Avery, you started talking about uh, which ones come first, and this is a question we're getting a lot, uh, which is, when will this funding start to move? And so you mentioned the one grant. Are there other ones that could be earlier in the cycle that people need to pay attention to? You know, I, I haven't really heard that much yet, and a lot of this is going to be up to the administration um, with when it comes to the discretionary pots of funding. The, the one thing that is tricky here, uh, in particular with the highway dollars, is the increase above 
current levels, which is estimated to be 35% above current levels for highway dollars. Um, that is entirely reliant on the continuing resolution 2022 appropriations process, which I know Marcia touched on. So long as we do not have a, a traditional appropriations bill passed for fiscal year 2022, the highway dollars are going to be running on fast act levels. So that's going to get complicated. Uh, I would say if we weren't currently having an entire debate about whether or not we're going to fund the government or do continuing resolutions, um, so long as we're doing a continuing resolution, that's that's going to delay that. But is, if that does get resolved, uh, the highway aid to the states would be out pretty quickly within a month if, if things run normally and perhaps there's a breakthrough. Um, but we'll certainly share as we keep scrubbing and as we hear more and more, um, certainly week to week, we're going to be in, in conversations with the White House and with the uh, infrastructure czar, Landrew, um, about when things will be coming coming due, because it's not all explicit in the bill. There are There is discretion. It's a discretionary grant program. So there is uh, a lot of discretion in a lot of these programs for DOT and, and other relevant agencies to develop how they want these to look. Yeah, I know I very much uh, appreciate that. I had the chance this morning to talk to uh, the Ohio Department of Transportation Director Jack Marchbanks briefly about this and they are mobilizing and they are uh, they're getting ready uh, because of the potential formula funds coming quickly. So um, uh, we're, uh, we're we're all getting ready. Here. So uh, we've got a, another question uh, that's come in about uh, the agencies that are receiving funding. So you mentioned DOT a little bit, but do you get do you get a sense that any of these federal agencies are far along in the planning process? Are they are they ready for this or is there going to be some significant ramp up time? So I, I think most of them are ready for this. Most of these dollars are coming through grant programs that existed already. And we, you know, identified programs that work well and, and boosted them. And that was that was an agreement from day one in June when the crew started actually developing the framework that we were going to look at existing programs and not reinvent the wheel as much as possible. The largest amount of new programs really is in the DOT world, but I will say even something like the EB. Uh, formula program that was created that was entirely in consultation with the highways administration. So if they didn't, they were very clear to tell us this is what we think we can do. This is what we administratively know that we can do. And, you know, if you want to do it, this is how we would suggest you do it. So, um, you know, there is going to be a ramp up, but there's a lot of consideration for administrative cost and the administrative ramp up that will be needed on a staffing level, that money is in there. Um, and so, you know, from, from a staffing perspective, I think everybody should be good and covered. And certainly from a programmatic perspective, you know, a lot of these dollars, I don't know, I couldn't give you a percentage, but a lot of these dollars are coming to existing programs. So we've got an interesting question here. Uh, Knowing Senator Portman was such a leader in, in this bill, uh, and I'm sure you, you negotiated all of it, so maybe there are no favorites, but are there any particular programs that are competitive that, that he's just emphatically hoping that Ohio will make sure to compete for and, and get? Anything that his, his focus has been on that we should really pay attention to? Yeah, you know, it's certainly for, for Cincinnati, it's no surprise that the Bridge Investment Grant Program, that will be $12.5 billion over the next five years, we, is certainly of peak we've interest. We've heard of that one. We've heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> peak interest to him. Um, but certainly, you know, the, the Mega Project Grant Program will be huge um, for things just like the Columbus Crossroads, truly. Um, mega projects, things that really help, um, you know, make an area competitive for further economic investment. Um, that's a $5 billion program that'll be new, but kind of similar to infra, quite frankly, just higher um, calibers of projects, higher sizes, but it's intended to help execute those sorts of programs. But infra raise, um, certainly 
the mega project program, those are the ones that, you know, are uh, ones that Ohio is certainly ripe for. Um, and then beyond that, certainly anything in the, in the lane of, um, you know, the airport dollars, those are going to be great. And, and certainly something that, um, you know, we helped craft with, with Ohio in mind and, and even the transit dollars. I mean, some of them that we were looking at and what programs to plus up, you know, there was, a, there was a consideration for, um, you know, trying to do a state of good repair uh, focus for some of these dollars and some new starts to get, you know, new routes added and, and new service lines added. So um, a lot of the competitive pots we, we hope Ohio is ripe for. Great, so we, we have a personal question for you and then one for both you and Marsha. Um, the personal question is you were, you were staffing this, you were right in the middle of it. What, to those of us who have not been on that floor, what was that like? Pretty surreal, <laughs> I will say. Um, um, you know, there was, there was quite a few moments where, uh, you know, you're, you have to kind of take a step back and realize the significance of the situation. But I think in it, when you're in the moment, you kind of have to forget <laughs> how uh, how the, the gravity of the situation in order to really focus on the task at hand. But, um, you know, I, I didn't really realize how what we were doing could be what it is. Um, I would say night one when we were in uh, Senator Portman's hideaway, which is his smaller office in the Capitol building. Um, my legislative director, we we're walking over there and she goes, this is going to be something one way or the other. And <laughs> from there we realized this, this entire, uh, you know, product, this entire negotiation was either going to be just a lot of conversation between 10 senators or, or it could really be something. So, you know, between that moment onward and the hurdles we got with the White House agreeing to it, getting it through the Senate, getting it through the House, getting it to the president's desk, um, each hurdle, it kind of makes you step back and realize, you know, what you can do and, and, you know, the significance of the situation. So it was, it was really, you know, couldn't ask for anything better to spend a summer like that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, hey, I, thank, thanks for sharing that perspective. It's, oh, go ahead, Marcia. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, and, and I, again, I'm like compliment Avery on this, but when you're in the middle of one of these things, I, I, I worked in the Senate, but only briefly, but I was in the White House when we passed any number, and it's like being in the middle of a hurricane, and then all of a sudden it stops for like 24 hours, and it starts back up again. But it is, uh, to, to say what she said earlier, this is why almost all of us got into government, which is to try to, this, this is a big deal, and this size of legislation won't come around again anytime soon. And so that's why it, this is this is it is so hard well, to see this actually happen, but also know it's not going to happen again. So everybody needs to make the very best of it. So true. And uh, to both of you, I know we have uh, about 90 people on the call who appreciate it and now have a lot more uh, to go after and do to get those projects done. So we're we're grateful for it. So we got another question about passenger rail, and this could go to uh, Marsha or to Avery. Um, what does the bill mean for passenger rail in Ohio? And we know here in central Ohio, uh, we're looking very actively at, at that space. Yes, I think central Ohio has an excellent opportunity. It depends on how you, you put it all together, but Amtrak is likely to, is going to expand. And if you look at a map of the country, the central Ohio is pretty imperative to that expansion. And I know morpsey has been uh, looking at that for quite some time. And I would just advocate that the, the, the region and the state come together to try to make that happen because it's, I would think I'll defer to Avery, but I think it's a possibility. Yeah, I, I would definitely second that. Um, of the 66 billion, there is a huge focus on the current network and improving its current condition, but there is uh, quite quite the nod, $16 billion worth of um, national network focus. And, and some of that's Fed State Partnership as well, but the $16 billion towards the national network is gonna be um, you know, ripe for that sort of opportunity. And amongst the other um, things that maybe we didn't necessarily advance 
supplementally appropriate uh, through through the framework. But you know, a lot of the dollars that are coming through the commerce piece, the commerce committee's piece of the surface transportation reauthorization, a lot of that authorizing language in the bill. Um, you know, there is a focus on trying to get different parts of America more competitive in the rail space um, and, and certainly an a interest in what the next generation of that looks like. So we got one more question on a totally different note, and that's about housing. And there's a lot of interest in housing. The housing market is tight and it doesn't matter the income level. There's a lot of discussion and work going on in Central Ohio. Um, are there buckets in this bill that relate to housing? I mean, yeah. So the the transit reauthorization language includes uh, a Cortez Masto bill. Uh, the name is escaping me, but it is with regard to planning and housing plans and transit planning and trying to coordinate those two efforts to make sure that, you know, when you're looking at local planning, there's there's a coordinated effort between getting folks where they need to go and and you know making sure that they're living in, in a area that provides mobility. So um, that's certainly in there. Um, truly, uh, housing was not in the definition of infrastructure agreed to by the bipartisan group. So frankly, beyond that, um, you know, I can't really say that there's a clear direct line to housing. You could definitely make the argument that improved infrastructure and certainly things like the Reconnecting Communities Pilot Program can help enhance the overall landscape of housing and housing affordability. But, um, you know, there was kind of an agreement up front that 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 sort of effort would be handled in the in the, the broader bill, the social spending bill with regard to um, housing. And it certainly has been. Currently, that's a $150 billion investment that's planned for, for the reconciliation bill. So. That's great. Uh, so we're going to ask both of them to stay on the line. I don't see any more questions at this point. Um, uh, as we go to our, so thank you again, Avery. Um, as we go to our next speaker, Joe Garrity, uh, just going back to uh, Marsha. Marsha, we're going to have to make you an honorary Westerville North High School graduate uh, because between me, Joe, and Avery, uh, three out of the four of us are. So consider yourself an honorary one. Um, <laughs> Joe Garrity, Director of Government Affairs and Westerville North graduate. <laughs> Please go ahead. Hey, wait, I'll Joe, see. I'd be happy to be an honorary member, OK? Yes, yes. The warrior, done. you're welcome to, to join us. So I hope you're all doing uh, well today and staying healthy. Avery and Marsha, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it really was insightful to hear from from both of you. Thank you for your your leadership and your and your partnership. And so I'm going to focus on on three things. One, just reminding folks how this is truly a once in a generation opportunity. Two, our Ohio congressional leaders had their fingerprints and DNA all over this. And then three, Morpsey is here to help. This is what we're here for. And so just to reiterate some of the items um, that both uh, Avery and Marsha hit earlier is there's just so many different buckets of, of opportunity here, whether it's $351 billion for, for highways, the largest federal investment uh, for Amtrak since its founding, new programs, elevated formula dollars, broadband, housing, $25 billion for, for the airport improvement grant program, the airport terminal improvement program, whether we're looking, like what's so exciting about all of this is you know, our region is growing and there are specific initiatives. We talked about rail earlier, there's link us, but then also for a community, this is an opportunity to fix that deteriorating bridge. It's, there's just so many items, both transformative and both sort of like kitchen table and kitchen table issues that we're trying to address here to get to and from and make our region a little bit easier to, to travel around to. And so, 
as I said, on getting to the second item, I'm just rem reminded how lucky we are to have folks like Senator Portman, who led this bipartisan effort, and then like Congresswoman Beatty as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus a couple weeks ago. This does not get over the finish line without both of their leadership. And Senator Brown, I know, was also instrumental as well. So we just really thank them for their leadership and partnership in a period of intense polarization. Uh, it's really, really heartwarming to see that we can work together to to do some common sense things. This is infrastructure week, and so we're we're really thrilled to to get something done. Furthermore, we have a, another opportunity to showcase our region on Friday with the vice president uh, visiting here in in central Ohio. But the the third point and the important one today is as we transition now from this bipartisan infrastructure framework or bill and advocacy, as we transition from advocacy to implementation, MORPC stands ready to be a resource for you. So you know, today is just the beginning. And so we're gonna close today to, to let you know that as MORPC's role as an MPO, as a regional convener, we are cultivating a bring back the investment to Central Ohio team, or, or let's let's bring the money back to Central Ohio to make our region a better place uh, for all all of our residents. And you know we are going to cultivate and create this this team, and we plan to hire a person that is dedicated to this task as a a, a grants officer that is looking for different buckets of opportunity through both the the infrastructure investment. Uh, and Jobs Act, but also other opportunities as as well. Marcia, Marcia mentioned, you know, there's still a, a reconciliation bill, a, a debt ceiling, appropriations, earmarks. There's a lot of funding opportunities that can make your community a little bit of a better place. And that's what we're trying to, to do here in Central Ohio to assist our 75 local government members. So when you need an update on, hey, how's this raise grant? How is it how is it going to be broken down? Well, it's it's 60 40. It's 390 million for highways. It's 262 million for transit. It's 166 million for walking and biking. It's 157 million for ports and rails combined. We are going to be there for you. So you don't have to get in the weeds all the time. We're here to do that for you. And so and so I will I'll share a link for you. We we created a a link, a web page, sort of a one-stop shop for you to, to get in the weeds about the bill, but also um, as we work to form this team, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. This is uh, the opportunity. This is what Morpsy is here for. Uh, this is, a, again, that this once in a generational opportunity. And so I'll, I'll share the link uh, shortly, uh, but with that, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Right. Are there any additional questions that we see here? Joe, just as we're thinking about this grants team, I, I think we want to be really clear that this is not uh, uh, something we're doing in a vacuum. And so communities will be engaged in this. I know that uh, we'll be pulling in other regional organizations. This is an all hands on deck effort, um, but we're excited about this leadership position that we'll be hiring to really spearhead this and, and uh, we're, we're aggressively trying to get uh, somebody talented on board to help us help us do that and navigate that. Uh, Joe, when you're, you're uh, talking with uh, state legislators and others around um, uh, about this bill, are there any, any concerns, any advice that you're hearing that local governments are gonna need to, to dive in on just even from the state's perspective with this bill? So I would say, when we're trying to compete, and I know in, in conversations we've talked about is, is you know, we work better together. And so whether it's from a, a grants officer perspective, Morpsey facilitates a group called the Columbus Region Coalition, where we work with one voice to try and bring back federal investment back to, to central Ohio. And so as we compete for these these grants, I think there's this element of the Columbus Way working together to prioritize and compete for for certain competitive grants and talking as well with our partners at the state house. 
but then also, do we have specific point people? Um, so it, we're creating this new position at Morpsey that's dedicated to, to grants and bringing investment back to Central Ohio. Cultivating a group and point person at Ohio State, uh, at ODOT, um, at development. So we're, we're all working and collaborating together to bring back that investment. Um, this will illustrate uh, that, we're, that we're working together. And I would say in addition to that, uh, with this uh, relatively new administration, is uh, we really need to focus through the lens of, of equity as well. And so re regions realize that this is, uh, you know, there's, there's blood in the water here. and We're, we're, we're going to be competing with other regions. I think we have a lot of strategic advantages here in our 15 county region. And so if we work together in partnership with the state, I think we can, uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunity here. And it is because of the, the leadership of folks like Senator Portman and Congresswoman Beatty and Senator Brown as well, that this got over the finish line. The one other question we have came in about rural communities. So we've talked a little bit about some of these really large uh, projects. Uh, Avery and Marsha talked a little bit about bridges, but rural communities in particular have a lot to benefit from this bill. What what would we be looking for there? I would say what stands out the most is the $65 billion for, um, for broadband. And I think when, you, to your question earlier, I think there's a lot of alignment here. And Avery mentioned the, the Appalachian dollars that are a little bit outside of our region, but we also represent Hocking, Hocking County as well, is that both the Biden administration and the, the Trump administration as well have realized uh, from the pandemic that we really need to elevate uh, investment in some of our rural communities. And so whether it's whether it's broadband, whether it's uh, working to combat the, the opioid epidemic that Senator Portman has been a, a a, a true leader on in the, the U.S. Senate, there are several opportunities. Uh, and this is something where we can really double down on from a broadband perspective with House Bill 2 passing earlier this year is, can we leverage some of that state funding from House Bill 2 to attract additional federal investment of that $65 billion pot um, in the, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure uh, bill that just was signed into law? All right, we have one last question, which is about ODOT and frankly, any uh, state agency. Have we heard any rumblings of them having public outreach programs or things uh, looking for advice on how to spend uh, the dollars they receive? Very good question. I know there have been conversations uh, with ODOT, um, but I have not heard of, of, of public hearings. I'm happy to, to reach out to, to their team to, to see uh, what their approach is and working in partnership with MPOs. I know there have been conversations, um, but this is a, another example of us having to, to move swiftly and, and act quickly and work in partnership with the state. So, so John, thank you, uh, thank you for that question and I'll be sure to let you know soon. Okay, any closing thoughts, uh, Joe, before we uh, finish up? I mean, thanks to, to Avery, thanks, thanks to Marsha, you know, this, again, this is a, a once in a generation opportunity. I couldn't be more proud of our Ohio congressional delegation. And then lastly, um, the link is in the chat. We are he here to be that intergovernmental liaison for you to bring back this investment to Central Ohio. So please use us as a resource. Great, thanks, Joe. and. Again, uh, Morpsey's role is to be a resource for you. So look look for that soon. Everything from staff time to dashboards to briefings to application deadlines. Um, we want to be here so uh, we can make it easy for you to go after these funds um, in Central Ohio. So lots of great information. My thanks again to Avery and to Marsha. Um, what, what an incredible moment and what an incredible bipartisan moment. Uh, to invest in these things we've been saying we need for years and that we need to to get in front of our growth. So um, we look forward to the work ahead. Of course, at Morpsey, we want to make sure you know we're a resource for you on a couple different levels. We have a couple things that you can uh, get additional briefings on, one of which is tomorrow on rural broadband. 
Uh, so uh, the links in the chat, you can definitely sign up for that. Another one is on parkland donation considerations. And this gets really interesting in the age where there may be funding for infrastructure to support that. So that's on December 1st. And then uh, for commission members, uh, we have a special future of work session on workforce uh, before the Morpsey Commission meeting on Thursday, December 9th. So uh, you're going to want to be this be there early. It's free lunch and it's also a great interactive session about workforce and how uh, that's looking coming out of the pandemic. And with that, that's our session today. We really appreciate everybody being here. This will not be the last you hear on the IIJA, and uh, we look forward to helping you. Do let us know if you have questions. Do let us know how we can make uh, this resource better for you. In the meantime, we finished a couple minutes early. Enjoy the afternoon, and if we don't talk to you sooner, have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.